All right. Well, greetings, Arizona high school sports fans. Big news yesterday. The AIA's executive board voted on a phased-in approach to get fall sports up and running. All the information shared yesterday and on this video is up to date as of right now, as we like to say. We want to preface everything with as of right now because anything could change if any directives come our way. And as we all know, uh, that come at any time. But the AIA administration has plans in place to adjust uh, to most any scenario. And the person in charge of our group in Phoenix is Executive Director David Hines. Once again, welcome back to YouTube and taking time to answer some questions for us. Thanks, Seth, for putting this together. My pleasure. Uh, today, we'll focus mainly on the news from yesterday and about the processes that uh, have gone into this. So we'll start off with um, now that the fall season has been defined by the executive board, talk about how you think all this will shake out. Well, we are hopeful that, uh, that we can uh, continue uh, as a state trending in the direction that we're trending, which is more towards a more positive result. Uh, people are doing their part, and I think that's extremely helpful to be able to uh, give our uh, high school kids the opportunity to compete. So uh, as the, uh, the board has put this in place, it gives us at least some dates, target dates that we can uh, prepare to get kids back at practice and some dates for a competition, give them uh, some specific times that they are now uh, able to get back and start getting back in shape and preparing for those seasons. Um, so that that's really helpful. Uh, we have had a lot of school, school districts that have allowed some of their coaches to begin working with their kids in an out of season format, which has uh, been very helpful to try to get them back to activities. We do have some schools that have not been able to work with their kids yet. So we wanted to give uh, them a target date that if they are working with their schools and school boards, that they would be able to have something in place to be able to begin uh, working with their kids prior to uh, the season actually uh, beginning. All right. Um, so what were the reasons for determining uh, these new fall dates? Well, we really looked at a, a phased approach based on uh, whether there were a uh, high risk type sport, a medium risk sport or a low risk sport. Uh, mainly that comes around with contact. So uh, August 17th is the first one out with golf. Uh, obviously in the state of Arizona, our golf courses have been open um, even since last March. Uh, so we have some uh, protocols and modifications that we, are, we have put in place that have, we have now sent to all of our schools, uh, principals, athletic directors, superintendents, that we are requiring they follow uh, those modifications to help uh, their kids as they're coming back. But example in, in, in golf, um, kids will be wearing a mask up until the time uh, they may tee off, but in golf, you typically can social distance. We are outside, a uh, lot of room. The pins are, are in place permanently so the kids don't have to pull the pin out, so there's no touching that, that way. We are scoring matches electronically, so there's no need to uh, share a scorecard. Uh, no more high fives or, or anything like that uh, during this time. So that is a, a, probably the easiest sport to kind of get back. Kids do not have to report to school. They can go right to the golf course. They can go from there back home. Um, and really in any of our sports, as we're suggesting at this point, uh, kids can come ready for practice. So they don't have to use a locker room. If we have a restroom available, <clears throat> then they will uh, do not necessarily have to uh, be in a locker room where there's a little more close environment. Uh, so even in the indoor sports, uh, as we go uh, into the third week of our phase in approach with volleyball, badminton, uh, by nature of the sport, we can social distance with that. Our warm ups, kids will be wearing masks. Coaches will be wearing masks at all time in all sports, inside or outside. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to help mitigate that potential spread, uh, trying to keep kids in small groups. 
So cross country swimming would be the next group out on the 24th. Uh, badminton, volleyball, and fall soccer would be the third sports rolled out uh, on August 31st. And then about a month from now, uh, we would bring in football you know, with the hope that these numbers continue to go down and, and things are uh, a little better situation for all of us. All right, um, now we just talked about uh, which, which uh, sports are kind of kicking off first. And so now conference leaders have to come up with new schedules or amend existing schedules. Uh, when can we expect the new schedules to come out? Well, that's a terrific uh, task. Uh, since our conferences are responsible for regular season schedules. Uh, since we are starting later, there's going to have to be some modification of those schedules. Conferences will be meeting with all their region chairs. Uh, they will get together to uh, modify whatever schedules they need so that they can get the contests in. Individ or the individual or excuse me, team sports uh, like volleyball and badminton can play on multiple days. So it will be easier to uh, adjust their schedule. Uh, the concern with football, we only play once a week. Uh, so the ability to just uh, move the schedules is a little more of a challenge. Uh, we are going to limit uh, the total number of contests in each of our sports because we are starting later. So they will not have as many competitions as in the past. So uh, those, those things are gonna have to be looked at closely um, as they prepare each conference on who's gonna qualify for any type of postseason play. And so those schedules will be dependent on what they choose to do. All right, now you just mentioned one restriction. We're gonna have to probably reduce the number of maximum competitions for each sport. What other restrictions are being placed on uh, the scheduling? For, for the sports? Well, the most important thing that the board and, and the committees and groups that we have uh, met with, including our sport advisory committees, is that they really want to get the regular, as many regular season contests in. So in the sports of uh, fall, fall soccer and volleyball for this year only, right now in the fall, there will be no tournament games. Uh, we were concerned with tournament games, with getting multiple people at one facility. That was a concern. And number two, um, a lot of times we have moved schedules around to accommodate tournaments. And what we really need to accommodate is the opportunity for our kids uh, to play regular season matches uh, and games so that we can um, be able to determine who will qualify for postseason play. Right. Um, uh, take us through the process of, of getting to this point with uh, all the committees you've worked with and, and the ideas that have gone back and forth into making these decisions. Well, we have communicated with a lot of groups. Our uh, return to uh, activity documents that we put together went through the governor's office, went through uh, ASA, ASBA, uh, associations that went through our sports medicine, which obviously they helped create, um, including our modifications we have shared with them. We have shared with the superintendent of public instruction. We have met with uh, the sport advisory groups of these sports that are in the fall uh, to get direction. The Arizona Football Coaches Association, um, ran a Zoom call where they had over 100 football coaches involved uh, discussing those things. And one of the plans they came up with for football uh, is what we are following, which is the return to practice September 7th and competition uh, October 2nd. So uh, that was helpful. Our sport advisory committees, uh, we have a crisis management committee made up of some staff, some board members and the uh, conference chairs of each of our six conferences. We met with them and then all this information that we have worked with, with the staff, vetted with those groups, then was brought forward to the executive board. All right. Um, now with the number of schools mainly situated in the uh, reservation areas in the northern part of the state, uh, dropping sports completely for the fall, how will the conference and regions be aligned to address this? Well, the, uh, the schools or the conferences most affected 
uh, by the schools that have um, determined to cancel their fall sports as of right now. Uh, they are in, have plans to make those adjustments um, and they'll adjust with their schedules um, and how they'll determine how and who will qualify for postseason play. Uh, we are um, in the works of scheduling a Zoom call with our schools that have uh, canceled uh, to have discussions with them on next steps and what things that we could potentially help them with to allow their kids to potentially compete. Right, and, and that was the next thing we were gonna to touch on. Uh, are you able to talk about some of the uh, plans that, that or, or ideas you might have in place for some of these schools that may not be able to play uh, fall sports in a traditional fall setting? Well, you know, we have, <clears throat> we have uh, some real disparity with our uh, schools around the state, meaning uh, a lot of our schools uh, are on tribal land um, and they have uh, executive orders from their tribal government. And as a sovereign uh, nation and a sovereign people, um, we have to pay attention to that. That is unique to the other schools that we have throughout the state that really follow uh, our governor's orders. Um, and so they have had some restrictions uh, placed on those communities that have not changed from last March. Uh, and the other thing I think that it's important to understand is uh, with the Native American community, uh, they are only 4% of, uh, of our population, but they are being affected uh, sometimes up to five times more than other people uh, and other uh, ethnic backgrounds across the state. So that is concerning and we understand and absolutely respect what they have done. And so uh, with the work of Ricky Greer, who uh, is the athletic director at uh, Hopi High School up on the reservation, he is on our uh, executive board, uh, represents the 2A and, and has a lot of communication with the 3A North uh, up on the reservation. So uh, we are working with him to set up this Zoom call next week uh, to look at next steps and how we can move forward. All right. Um, are there any other items uh, you can share now that were uh, maybe not part of the news release that we had yesterday? Well, I just, you know, the, the only thing I would help encourage is uh, everybody uh, has been doing a, a really pretty good job of, of following the requirements of the CDC. And uh, again, you know, we can't say enough. It's pretty simple, but it can be complicated. But, you know, wear a mask um, when you're around people. Uh, social distance while you're around people. Wash your hands continually every opportunity you, you can. And if you're sick, please stay home. We just are, are asking that message to be continued in our communities so that our kids uh, have the opportunity to compete. This has been devastating when we lost the spring. Uh, as, as the head of an athletic association that oversees 320,000 kids in our state, <clears throat> we wanna give these kids every opportunity they can. Um, and I know that around uh, some of our neighboring states, uh, governments have uh, shut those association down and move them to different times. Uh, we feel like we can do this um, with the procedures and modifications we put in place. People need to pay attention and do what we're asking them to do uh, to give these kids that opportunity. They need the opportunity to be able to get back uh, with their teammates, be able to participate. Uh, and it's going to be a whole statewide effort. It really is. Our coaches have to be great leaders. They're going to be in mass all the time. Uh, you know, be good examples for our kids. Our kids are going to come in mass. They're going to keep them in and out. So we want to protect them. We want to protect our coaches and we want to protect our communities. All right. Um, 
Last, last thing we kind of have here is um, now there were some slight changes made to the Sports Medicine Advisory Committee's uh, guidelines for return to sport and activity. Uh, what were those changes and um, where are we now in, in those phase guidelines? Uh, minimal changes, Seth. The, the big thing is uh, back a few months ago, uh, the discussion from the uh, Washington DC was a phased approach. There are different phases, one, two, and three. Uh, that has really been changed to more metrics. And as the governor said, with schools, uh, there are gonna be a lot more imp impact and, uh, and information for each of our counties. And it's gonna be more county led. So uh, we have kind of changed the phases to the metrics uh, that the CDC will put into place and the, each county that will put into place the rest of the information, though, is still the same. All right, great. Uh, well, that's all we have for now. I'd like to thank David Hines again for being able to share his insights with everyone out there. Uh, the AIA just wants to remind everyone that in this process of bringing sports back as safe as possible, please do what you can to help stop the spread of COVID-19, as David had mentioned before in one of his answers, and also to hopefully you will be able to implement the guidelines set forth by our Sports Medicine Advisory Committee. Also follow uh, local health guidelines. Uh, remember also to get the latest information regarding a return to competition on azpreps365.com or any of our social media channels at azpreps365. And also, uh, this is Q&A number four with David Hines. The pre all previous ones can be found on our azpreps365 YouTube channel. Have a great day, everybody.